Good evening. You're looking live at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, where a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket is standing vertical at this hour, awaiting liftoff tonight at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time, or 3.59 a.m. UTC. This mission will be carrying aloft a communications satellite for the company Inmarsat. This spacecraft is heading for a position in geostationary orbit to provide mobile communication services across the Atlantic Ocean and across the eastern United States and as well as uh, other parts of North America. This will be the second SpaceX launch of the day. SpaceX is aiming to complete a Friday doubleheader and launch activity following the liftoff of a Falcon 9 from out at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California earlier today with 51 Starlink Internet satellites. That launch uh, was successfully completed and now SpaceX has turned their attention to this mission for Inmarsat set to lift off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in about an hour and 11 minutes. My name is Stephen Clark. I'm the editor of SpaceFlightNow.com and welcome to our live coverage for this SpaceX mission from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. We'll be bringing you updates throughout the remainder of the countdown and throughout the 32-minute uh, climb into orbit that the Falcon 9 rocket will complete before deploying this Inmarsat payload into its elliptical transfer orbit. Again, it's about a 32-minute flight from the time of liftoff until the Falcon 9 mission is complete. We'll also have more details on the Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft that's ready for launch tonight. We uh, had a chance to talk with the Chief Technology Officer of Inmarsat yesterday. We'll be uh, airing his interview as well, coming up later in our programming. Right now, everything appears to be on schedule for the liftoff tonight at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time. That's at the opening of an 89-minute launch window. The launch window runs until 12.28 a.m. Eastern, 5.28 a.m. UTC. But right now, as you can see, the countdown clock at Kennedy Space Center is right on target for the opening of that 89-minute launch window. So right now, we're expecting liftoff at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time one hour and 10 minutes from now. Now one hour and eight minutes until the scheduled launch of the Falcon 9 rocket with the Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft. Again, everything continuing to look good for liftoff tonight at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time. The next major milestone in the countdown will come at T-35 minutes. That's when the propellant loading should be getting underway. Again, that will be at T-35 minutes or at 10.24 p.m. Eastern Time, assuming the liftoff remains on schedule.
T minus one hour, six minutes and 38 seconds and counting. This mission will be carrying the Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft into a geostationary transfer orbit. This spacecraft is owned by the London-based company Inmarsat, which specializes in mobile communication services around the world. The spacecraft was built by Airbus and is based on the Airbus Eurostar 3000E platform with all-electric propulsion. Those plasma thrusters, uh, fueled by xenon gas and uh, fed by electricity, will be propelling the spacecraft from its elliptical transfer orbit that the Falcon 9 will deploy it into, into a circular geosynchronous orbit over the course of about seven months. The spacecraft will be positioned in an operational perch in geostationary orbit 22,000 miles over the equator, orbiting in lockstep with the planet's rotation, giving it a coverage area over the Atlantic Ocean. With its xenon fuel on board, the spacecraft has a total mass of 12,400 or 12,048 pounds, excuse me. That's a little more, or a little less than 5.5 metric tons. Has two payloads on board, one in L band, one in KA band. Uh, the L band payload will use a large 30 foot or 9 meter diameter reflector that will be unfurled uh, like an umbrella in orbit uh, next week, assuming this launch goes according to plan tonight. That L-band reflector will then provide safety of life and critical mobile communication services to maritime and airborne customers. And the primary mission of this satellite is mobile connectivity for ships and airplanes in the Atlantic region. We had a chance to chat with Peter Hattinger, the Chief Technology Officer of Inmarsat, yesterday on the eve of this launch. I'm going to air some of that interview now. Now one hour and two minutes until the scheduled launch time for the Falcon 9 rocket within Marsat 6F2. We apologize for that technical issue with the interview with Peter Hattinger. 
We're going to try to restart or pick up the interview where we left off in the next few moments. Hopefully uh, that'll work out. Uh, but right now the launch remains on schedule for 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.59 a.m. UTC. As SpaceX's countdown approaches T-minus one hour, we're going to try to resume the interview we had yesterday with Peter Hattinger, the Chief Technology Officer of Inmarsat, talking about the importance of this satellite for his company's uh, constellation, which consists of 14 satellites currently in orbit, soon to be 15, with tonight's launch.
That was Peter Hattinger, the Chief Technology Officer for Inmarsat, the customer for tonight's Falcon 9 launch by SpaceX, which is now 50 minutes, less than 50 minutes away now. We're about 15 minutes away from the start of propellant loading on the Falcon 9 rocket. That'll be the next major milestone in this countdown. In the minutes ahead of that milestone, the SpaceX launch and landing team at the Launch and Landing Control Center uh, just south of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station will be polled for their readiness to proceed into the final 35-minute countdown sequence. They'll register electronically uh, their go or no-go to move ahead into, propell into propellant loading and for the launch of the Falcon 9 rocket tonight. That poll should be getting underway in less than 10 minutes ahead of the start of propellant loading in about 14 minutes. If you're just joining us, you're looking live at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. My name is Stephen Clark. I'm the editor of Space Flight Now. If you haven't done so already, please hit the thumbs up or the like button on our YouTube stream. That really helps us gain a larger audience and a larger following for our launch coverage. We want to bring this late night, Friday night launch to as many people as possible. One way to do that through the algorithm on YouTube here is to uh, click the thumbs up or the like button to let people know that this uh, stream is uh, active and to let people know to tune in as we're now uh, less than an hour away from the opening of tonight's launch window. If you want to support our coverage, there's also uh, ways you can do that. You can join our YouTube channel. You join our YouTube channel, depending on which membership level you select. You can gain access to bonus members-only video features we have on our YouTube channel. You can also contribute in the Super Chat here on YouTube. And these contributions help us maintain and expand our coverage. Uh, Cape Canaveral is a busy place, uh, busier than ever. This will be the uh, ninth launch of the year from the Florida Spaceport. It's the 12th SpaceX launch overall. SpaceX is targeting as many as 100 launches of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets this year, as well as the debut of the Starship rocket in Texas. Other launch companies are also active at Cape Canaveral, United Launch Alliance, uh, Relativity Space, also preparing for their first launch of their Terran 1 launch vehicle in the coming weeks, potentially. We want to bring all these launches to you, and to help us do that, you can contribute in the Super Chat or join our membership, uh, join our YouTube channel, and get access to those members-only video features. We appreciate any support you can offer as we uh, try to keep up and bring you uh, our standard of coverage that we've brought to our Space Flight Now readers for more than 20 years. The official weather forecast for tonight's launch window calls for a 75% chance of favorable weather conditions at Cape Canaveral. Primary weather concerns are associated with the risk of thick clouds and cumulus clouds, which uh, could create a risk for lightning. However, right now there are stars visible in the sky over Cape Canaveral. It is windy, as you may be able to tell from their camera shaking a bit uh, looking out at pad 40. But right now the weather does appear favorable or launch, at least at the surface. The surface weather locally at the Cape appears to be favorable for launch. SpaceX teams will also be monitoring the weather and sea conditions downrange, where the drone ship named Just Read the Instructions is holding position uh, more than 400 miles or more than 600 kilometers due east of Cape Canaveral for landing of the first stage booster uh, shortly after launch tonight. And of course, the other factor that the SpaceX and weather teams will be monitoring is uh, upper-level wind shear. It has to do with the uh, velocity and direction of winds at different altitudes in the atmosphere. And uh, SpaceX wants to make sure that the Falcon 9 uh, structurally uh, is able to safely pass through those winds on the way to space.
T minus 42 minutes, 22 seconds and counting until tonight's launch window opens at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 3.59 a.m. UTC. We just heard our first update uh, this evening from SpaceX launch control that the uh, countdown is proceeding right now for the opening of tonight's launch window at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.59 a.m. UTC. And the launch readiness poll is now open. So members of the launch and recovery team will register uh, via electronic vote their go or no go to proceed into propellant loading and to proceed into the launch this evening. We expect to hear the outcome of that poll in the next few minutes. And if everything is go, the propellant loading will get underway at T-minus 35 minutes. We hope to bring you uh, this audio from SpaceX Launch Control uh, throughout the remainder of the countdown. I think we're going to bring that up shortly. In the meantime, we want to uh, talk a little bit more about the spacecraft on this mission. The spacecraft is Inmarsat 6F2. Uh, this spacecraft was built by Airbus. is based on the Airbus Eurostar E3000 satellite platform. It weighs about five and a half metric tons, a little more than 12,000 pounds at liftoff. These videos come from the Airbus manufacturing facility in Toulouse, France. You see the spacecraft is about the size of a double-decker bus when it's folded up in launch configuration. It has those antennas all buttoned up next to the satellite body as well as the antennas or the solar arrays folded up against the spacecraft bus as well. This video shows it coming out of one of the uh, test chambers. Looks like the thermal vacuum chamber at the Airbus manufacturing plant in Toulouse in southern France. Here's a look at one of the solar array panels uh, during integration and test. This is a solar array deployment test that was conducted before the spacecraft was shipped across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, by aircraft last month. The solar rays on this spacecraft, when it's fully extended, uh, will span about 47 meters. That's roughly the same wingspan of a Boeing 767 jumbo jet. Here's a look inside the uh, anechoic chamber where uh, transmission testing is done, radio frequency testing is done on the spacecraft inside the uh, Airbus facility in France. And here the spacecraft is getting Closed up within the shipping container. This is the container that it rode in for the transit on the Airbus Beluga heavy lift cargo aircraft from France to Cape Canaveral. Now about 39 minutes to go until the opening of tonight's launch window again. If you're just joining us and haven't done so yet, please hit the thumbs up button on our YouTube stream. The like button uh, helps us gain a larger audience for our coverage. You can also contribute to our coverage and contribute to uh, us bringing you this launch and future launches in the Super Chat. We want to thank those of you who have already done so, including Astro Joe. Thank you for your contribution. And another way to support our coverage is to join our YouTube channel. Click the Join button and gain access to members-only video features that we have uh, for our members. And again, if you do that, you'll be supporting our coverage as well. We're standing by for the outcome of the pre-launch readiness poll from SpaceX Launch Control. Uh, those team members are currently registering their go or no-go for propellant loading and launch.
Fast track on the countdown net. Polling is complete. We are go for propellant load and launch. A reminder on abort instructions. For non-urgent no-go conditions, brief the CE or LD and they will approve aborting the countdown. For urgent issues affecting the safety of the operation, operator shall call hold, hold, hold on the countdown net. Launch control will abort the launch auto sequence immediately and proceed into the launch abort auto. T minus 10 seconds, launch control will be hands off and relying on automated abort criteria for the remainder of the count. Falcon 9 tanks are venting for the start of prop load. You just heard the voice uh, from SpaceX Launch Control. The launch readiness poll is complete. The entire team is now go for beginning the loading of liquid propellants into the Falcon 9 rocket, beginning at T-minus 35 minutes, and that will culminate in liftoff of the Falcon 9 at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.59 a.m. UTC. Coming up on the start of propellant loading. Launch auto sequence has started. And there's the call of a launch auto sequence has started. So liquid propellants now are flowing into the Falcon 9 rocket out at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. This uh, process begins with loading of liquid oxygen into the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, as well as rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, also known as Rocket Propellant 1, into both Stage 1 and Stage 2. The liquid oxygen will not be loaded onto Stage 2 until about T-minus 16 minutes. That is part of the staggered propellant loading sequence that SpaceX uh, does for these Falcon 9 launches. So three of the four propellant tanks out on Pad 40 are now being loaded for liftoff in 34 minutes. We want to thank uh, Stephanie as well as Candice for your contributions in the Super Chat. We really appreciate that support, and this really goes a long way to help us bring you this live coverage for this launch of MRSAT 6F2 and for coverage we hope to bring you down the road later this year of the numerous missions set to go from here at Cape Canaveral or at Kennedy Space Center, including the launch next week of the next set of four astronauts going up to the International Space Station. Your contributions in the Super Chat, as well as those of you who join our YouTube channel, uh, really help us bring you this continuing coverage.
Now, 31 minutes, 43 seconds until the launch of a Falcon 9 rocket from here at Cape Canaveral, Florida, with a mission for Inmarsat. This uh, is the second Falcon 9 launch of the day. Earlier today, out at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off with 51 more Starlink Internet satellites. So if this launch tonight from the Cape happens as scheduled, it'll happen about nine hours after this Starlink launch from out at Vandenberg Space Force Base on the West Coast. Here's a look at the Falcon 9 as it lifted off at 11.12 a.m. Pacific Time, 2.12 p.m. Eastern, beginning its climb from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg, heading off to the south-southeast uh, with these 51 Starlink satellites heading for Group 2 of the Starlink constellation. This was the 11th SpaceX launch of the year. Tonight's launch will be number 12 of 2023 for SpaceX, continuing a pace of about one launch every four days. This uh, view shows an onboard camera shot from the first stage booster of the Falcon 9 as it made a spectacular pinpoint landing on a drone ship in the Pacific Ocean, uh, west of Baja, California. Gorgeous views, really crystal clear views of that first stage booster landing on the deck of the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. That drone ship will bring the booster back to uh, the port of Long Beach in Southern California, where it will be uh, transferred likely back to Vandenberg Space Force Base for refurbishment and reuse. Uh, that booster was flying for its ninth mission today. The booster set to launch tonight from Cape Canaveral is going for its third mission to space. 30 minutes now until the liftoff of SpaceX's second flight of the day from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral.
T minus 26 minutes and counting. Everything so far this evening uh, looks like it's going right according to plan, right by the book. Uh, liftoff is still scheduled for 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.59 a.m. UTC. Pallet loading is continuing as expected out at pad 40. If you look closely on the booster, the first stage, you can see some of the frost beginning to accumulate on the outer skin of that first stage airframe. That's uh, from the super cold liquid oxygen that's flowing into the liquid oxygen tank on the first stage. That liquid oxygen is chilled down to cryogenic temperatures several hundred degrees below zero. And as that is loaded into the liquid oxygen tank, a frost builds up on the outer skin. You can also see some condensation and some uh, vapors around the first stage. If you look closely over the next few minutes, you'll see that uh, frost or ice level rise on that first stage booster as it's filled up. Down below the liquid oxygen tank, at the very bottom of the first stage booster is the kerosene fuel tank. Uh, that will not frost over during the countdown because the kerosene is stored at closer to room temperature. Now less than 25 minutes to go until liftoff. Here's a look at some of the major countdown milestones this evening. SpaceX has already passed a couple of these milestones at T-minus 35 minutes. The launch auto sequence began. That's when the ground launch sequencer computer uh, took over the countdown. So a ground computer is currently overseeing all the automated steps to prepare the Falcon 9 for flight tonight. Coming up at T-minus 20 minutes or so. We expect to hear a call from SpaceX Launch Control that the RP-1 kerosene fuel load on the second stage of the Falcon 9 is complete. And following a few moments after that, we expect to see the so-called big vent from the strongback. That's the structure just to the right of the Falcon 9 out on pad 40. That will prepare for the start of liquid oxygen loading on stage 2 at T-minus 16 minutes. In the final 10 minutes of the countdown, the uh, navigation system on the Falcon 9 rocket will be confirmed or ready for flight, as well as the Falcon 9's range safety destruct system. T-minus 7 minutes, the engine chill-down procedure will begin to thermally condition the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage for flight. At about 5.5 minutes, uh, the kerosene fuel load on the first stage should be complete. At 4.5 minutes, the strongback that structure, that mast just to the right of the Falcon 9 will be again retracting to its intermediate position about a degree and a half from the launch vehicle. At T-minus two minutes, liquid oxygen loading will be terminated. At that point, SpaceX will have a fully loaded Falcon 9 rocket for liftoff. And then T-minus 60 seconds, a key milestone will be the start of the Falcon 9's auto sequence with the handoff of the control of the countdown from the ground computer to the flight computer on board the launch vehicle. The propellant tanks on the Falcon 9 will be brought up to flight pressure in the final 60 seconds of the countdown. And then at T-minus 3 seconds, the engine controller will give the command to light all nine Merlin engines uh, using an ignition fluid uh, called T-TAB, triethyl aluminum, triethyl borane, that will light or ignite the nine Merlin 1D engines. If all nine engines ignite and throttle up and pass an automated health check, the command will be issued to open hydraulic clamps at T minus zero, allowing the Falcon 9 to begin its climb into orbit. Here's a look at the uh, SpaceX mission patch for tonight's launch. Uh, SpaceX creates a patch like this for all of their missions that carry customer payloads. This patch shows the Falcon 9 rocket uh, ascending from Earth. On the left is an artist's illustration of what the Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft looks like in orbit with its solar rays and 30-foot diameter L-band antenna deployed. And on the right, uh, the four-leaf clover that is... Uh, a feature of all SpaceX mission patches for good luck.
Stage one, Pogo. And there's the big vent from the strong back. This uh, vent of gaseous oxygen is part of the preparations to start loading oxidizer onto the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. That'll begin in a few minutes from now. This uh, conditions or thermal aid conditions chills down the liquid oxygen loading line that runs from the ground Day storage two, tank out complete. at pad 40 to the upper stage. That's the line through which the liquid oxygen will flow into the second stage when that loading process begins. We also heard the call from SpaceX Launch Control that the second stage kerosene fuel tank has been now fully loaded. This is the first of the four propellant tanks to be fully loaded and filled for tonight's launch. T-minus 17 minutes and 20 seconds. Big vent uh, from the strong back continues. This vent will be terminated in uh, less than a minute. And when that vent terminates, we expect to hear a call from SpaceX launch controllers that the liquid oxygen loading is getting underway on the second stage of the Falcon 9. Everything continues to look very good for an on-time launch this evening. Spacecraft is on internal power and is go for launch. Just heard the call from the spacecraft console in SpaceX launch control. The Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft is now on internal power and configured for launch. Stage two locks load has started. And now liquid oxygen loading has started on the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. This is the fourth and final propellant tank to be filled tonight. Uh, the second stage has already received its full supply of kerosene fuel. Now the cryogenic oxidizer is being pumped aboard. 
Everything looks good right now for liftoff at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And currently, with the loading of fuel and oxidizer, a high-pressure cryogenic helium is also being loaded into the Falcon 9. This helium is stored in uh, high-pressure composite overwrapped vessels, essentially high-pressure tanks inside the Falcon 9 first stage and second stage. This helium is used to maintain pressure inside the tanks, inside the propellant tanks, as the fuel and oxidizer are consumed in flight. Just joining us, welcome to our live coverage of the SpaceX launch of a Falcon 9 rocket with the Enmarsat 6F2 mobile communications satellite from Cape Canaveral in Florida. You're looking live at Pad 40 at the Cape, where the Falcon 9 is now 15 minutes from launch. If you haven't done so already, please hit the thumbs up or the like button on our YouTube stream here. That helps us main, it helps us gain a larger audience for our coverage. That's one easy way for you, for you to help us out is by hitting the thumbs up or the like button here on YouTube. Also, if you want to support our coverage, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One of those is to contribute in the Super Chat. Uh, some of you have already done that tonight. We really appreciate your support. But if you enjoy our coverage, if you're enjoying our live stream tonight, you want to see more of these live streams in the future, please consider contributing in the Super Chat. We would really appreciate that support. It helps us uh, send someone out to the Cape for all of these launches, helps us uh, buy and maintain camera equipment to bring you these launches as well. You can also support our coverage by joining our YouTube channel by hitting the join button just below the video window. You do that depending on which membership level you choose, you can gain access to members only video features. And that's another way to support our coverage as well. Less than 14 minutes to go now until liftoff. This mission with uh, Inmarsat 6F2 will be heading on a trajectory due east from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. This map shows the approximate ground track that the Falcon 9 will take out over the Atlantic Ocean after blasting off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. We've labeled the location of Space Launch Complex 40 here on this map, as well as the location of the drone ship, a football size, football field sized vessel, a holding position more than 400 miles or 600 kilometers downrange out in the, in the Atlantic. That's where the first stage will attempt to land about eight and a half minutes after liftoff uh, for recovery and reuse. Also downrange, SpaceX has vessels or a vessel to retrieve the payload fairing, the nose cone of the Falcon 9 as it parachutes into the sea. This uh, easterly course is required for this mission because Inmarsat 6F2 will eventually settle into an equatorial orbit uh, more than 22,000 miles directly over the equator uh, for its communications mission over the Atlantic Ocean.
Coming up on T-minus 10 minutes until the liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket with NMARSAT 6F2. Those of you who are just joining us, here's a look at the payload for tonight's mission. This spacecraft is about the size of a double-decker bus. It weighs uh, about 12,048 pounds, fully fueled for launch. That's about 5.5 metric tons. It's owned by a London-based company called Inmarsat. The spacecraft was built by Airbus, has a satellite design with all-electric propulsion. The Falcon 9 will be deploying this spacecraft into an elliptical orbit with an apogee of about 22,000 miles or 34,700 kilometers in a perigee or low point uh, just above the atmosphere at 155 miles or 250 kilometers. These plasma thrusters uh, located on the end of articulating booms will circularize the spacecraft's orbit over a number of months. And then later this year, this spacecraft will be in position over the Atlantic Ocean to provide L-band and KA-band communication services for ships and aircraft over the Atlantic, over the Americas as well, providing connectivity for customers on the go. Minus eight minutes, 13 seconds, and counting. One of the next big milestones in this countdown will be the start of thermal conditioning or chill down on the first stage engines. That'll be beginning at T minus seven minutes. Engine chill has started. We just heard the call from SpaceX that engine chill down has started. Uh, this is a thermal conditioning process to begin flowing a little bit of super cold liquid oxygen through the engine plumbing, through the engine compartment at the very bottom of the Falcon 9 out on pad 40. This uh, thermal conditioning protects against thermal shock as the super cold cryogenic oxidizer flows at a more rapid pace through those engine components uh, when the engines actually ignite. Everything looking good right now for an on-time launch at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Stage one, RP-1 load is complete. And there's the call that the first stage has now been fully loaded with its supply of rocket-grade kerosene, also known as RP-1 or Rocket Propellant 1. This is a highly a refined hydrocarbon fuel that will feed the nine Merlin engines at the bottom of the first stage for their two and a half minute burn. This propellant is densified, uh, meaning it's chilled close to its uh, freezing temperature to allow SpaceX to cram more molecules into the Falcon 9 rocket, giving the Falcon 9's engines a performance boost, giving the rocket a additional lift capability and ensuring that the rocket's first stage has enough reserve propellant to land on the drone ship. 
Final checks of the Falcon 9's navigation system uh, should now be complete. This, these are all automated checks that are done by the ground uh, computer overseeing the countdown. The range destruct system, the autonomous flight safety system should also be fully checked out and be configured for flight. Falcon 9 tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. Now less than five minutes to go in today's countdown. The next major milestone will be the retraction of the strong back from the Falcon 9 rocket. Here's a quick look at some of the major milestones for tonight's flight. It'll take about 32 minutes from liftoff until deployment, until separation of the Enmarsat 6F2 spacecraft. The first stage booster will burn its engines for two and a half minutes before separating from the upper stage and then beginning maneuvers with an entry burn and a final landing burn to settle onto the deck of the drone ship out in the Atlantic Ocean about eight and a half minutes after launch. The second stage will fire its engines two times to propel the MRSAT spacecraft into its highly elliptical transfer orbit. This booster, the first stage booster on tonight's flight, is designated uh, Booster 1077. It's going for its third flight tonight. It debuted back in October on a mission carrying crew to the International Space Station, the Crew-5 mission. And then it launched again most recently on January the 18th with a U.S. Space Force GPS satellite. Now three minutes to go in tonight's countdown. You can see that Strongback has indeed reclined from its position flush up against the Falcon 9 to an angle of about one and a half degrees from the vehicle. This began with the opening of clamps at the very top of the uh, at the very top of the strong back that uh, wrap around the upper stage. Those clamps opened and that allowed the strong back to uh, recline or retract away from the vehicle. It will recline in a more rapid fashion at liftoff. Two and a half minutes to go. We're expecting the final callouts shortly on the completion of liquid oxygen loading on the Falcon 9. And two minutes to go. And if you want to help us support our coverage, a couple of ways you can do that is to hit the thumbs up button, uh, to click the like button here on YouTube. And also, we appreciate any support you can provide in the super chats or by becoming a member of our YouTube channel. Stage two locks load is complete. 90 seconds coming up on T minus 90 seconds. We just heard the call that the second stage of liquid oxygen loading is complete. So SpaceX now has a fully loaded Falcon 9 out on pad 40. More than a million pounds of propellants have been loaded into the rocket over the last half hour or so. And the Falcon 9 in launch configuration stands 1.2 million or weighs 1.2 million pounds. Ground gas closeouts have started. Falcon 9 is in startup. Now approaching T minus 30 seconds. Falcon 9's onboard flight computer is now in control of the countdown.
Propellant tanks are being brought up to flight pressure at this time. Vent valves should be closed on the launch vehicles. Propellant tanks, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine ignition. And there's liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket carrying a communications satellite to geostationary orbit for Inmarsat. Falcon 9 continuing its climb into the atmosphere. Pitch program should be in to uh, target an easterly trajectory out over the Atlantic Ocean. Hearing nominal, normal callouts from SpaceX launch control. Propulsion is nominal. And it looks like the Falcon 9 has climbed into some cloud cover over the Space Coast. We're going to switch over to uh, SpaceX's stream now. Looks like they have also lost it in the cloud cover, but there is an onboard camera on the Falcon 9's first stage pointing it down. We have it again in our camera view from the Kennedy Space Center as the Falcon 9's nine Merlin engines continue powering, continue powering the Falcon 9 uh, downrange with Inmarsat 6F2, a new mobile communications satellite. Falcon 9 now is supersonic. It's past the point of maximum dynamic pressure. This is the point of peak stress on the vehicle as it uh, makes its way through the atmosphere, accelerating through the air. Now rocketing into the stratosphere, a minute 40 seconds into the flight. Still hearing normal callouts from SpaceX launch control. Looks like we're starting to lose that view in the cloud cover once again. We're going to switch to SpaceX's stream. SpaceX's stream includes some uh, video from the first stage from a rocket camera. See the plume of those nine Merlin engines expanding as the launch vehicle climbs into the rarefied air of the upper atmosphere. Coming up on main engine cutoff and stage separation. SpaceX feed does come with about 15 seconds or so of delay. We've seen or heard confirmation of main engine cutoff. There's stage separation. The 15 story tall first stage booster has been released from the upper stage of the Falcon 9, and now the Falcon 9's upper stage engine is igniting, producing more than 200,000 pounds of thrust. That engine bell glowing red hot from the superheated exhaust. That's uh, that red signature, that red hot signature you're seeing there is as expected as the nozzle heats up. And now the first stage on the left, you can see the camera from the first stage shows the grid fins have extended to prepare that booster for its descent back into the atmosphere. The first stage booster is still coasting upward. You can see its altitude is still climbing at 105 kilometers and rising. It'll coast to an apogee before beginning its descent. And there's payload fairing jettison. The nose cone, the shroud that cocooned the Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft has been jettisoned. That will parachute into the Atlantic Ocean in two pieces, two halves, and then a recovery team downrange will recover those two fairing halves for refurbishment and reuse. Four minutes into the flight now. Everything looking good so far on SpaceX's 12th launch of the year, their second launch of the day.
Approaching five minutes now since the liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Everything continuing to look good. A little more than a minute now away from the first stage entry burn. This will involve an ignition of three of the first stage's nine engines for a retrograde maneuver, a braking burn, to slow down as it dips deeper into the atmosphere. As we continue covering the Falcon 9's climb to orbit, we want to give a big shout out and thanks for all of those, uh, all, the, all of you who have contributed to our coverage in the super chat, as well as those of you who have become members and joined our YouTube channel. We appreciate your support; it helps us bring you coverage like this. Plus five minutes, forty-five seconds. We're now showing a map from SpaceX showing the location of the first stage booster as it's making its way toward the drone ship east of the Cape. The second stage continuing to accelerate, gain velocity, heading downrange. The second stage trajectory, the blue line shows uh, where the upper stage and the satellite would actually fall if the second stage were to suffer an accident or mishap at this point. But as you can see, the second stage engine is continuing to fire, passing 15,000 kilometers per hour now at an altitude of 167 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The first stage has uh, reached its apogee a few moments ago, now descending into the atmosphere. We're standing by for the ignition of the entry burn. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is the entry burn. Three engines uh, are igniting on the first stage booster. Booster 1077 making its way to the drone ship. Just read the instructions. You see the velocity decreasing as this burn continues. This should last about 30 seconds. Should be nearing the end of this burn now. We'll stand by for cutoff. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And there's entry burn shutdown. First stage descending below 40 kilometers now, 40,000 meters and descending. A little more than a minute now from the landing of the first stage on the drone ship. The second stage continues firing a, a little more than 30 seconds remaining in the upper stage burn. This burn of the upper stage will place the Enmarsat 6F2 spacecraft the payload on tonight's mission into a very low altitude parking orbit. Then there will be another burn by the upper stage later at about 26 minutes into the flight that will actually place the payload into its uh, proper orbit for separation. Stage one transonic. Again, the SpaceX video feed comes with about 10 to 15 seconds of delay. Stage two FTS has saved. Next milestone will be the start of the landing burn on the first stage booster. Stage one landing burn. That landing burn is underway, and I believe we just saw the cutoff, the planned cutoff of the upper stage engine. Nominal orbit insertion. And we just heard the call that the upper stage is in its nominal orbit after that first burn. Standing by for landing of stage the booster on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. And booster 1077 has safely landed on the deck of the drone ship. Just read the instructions floating out in the Atlantic Ocean. That's two launches and two landings in the books today for SpaceX, a Friday doubleheader. However, the mission is not yet complete. That was a spectacular launch, a spectacular landing, uh, but still a major milestone, a few major milestones to come in the next half hour or so. The upper stage engine, which you're seeing now in its coast phase, will relight at uh, about 26 minutes and 10 seconds after liftoff for a burn lasting about a minute. And that burn will place the Enmarsat 6 F2 spacecraft that you see here with its gold thermal insulation into a highly elliptical geostationary transfer orbit. And then that will set the stage for the deployment 
of that payload about 32 minutes after liftoff, 22 minutes from now. The map you can see here that we're getting from SpaceX shows the upper stage coasting out over the Atlantic Ocean, continuing its course eastbound, heading toward Africa. The first stage no longer moving after a safe landing on the drone ship. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda.
now 17 and a half minutes since the liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. You can see in this map, the upper stage continues its course over the Atlantic Ocean, heading for the west coast of Africa. Soon, we'll be crossing the equator, and around the time it crosses the equator uh, off the southwest part of Africa, near the Gulf of Guinea region, the upper stage engine will relight for about a minute long burn to propel the MRSAT 6F2 spacecraft to a faster velocity that will reshape its orbit from its circular low altitude orbit that it's currently in to a more oval shaped or elliptical geostationary transfer orbit. That boost in speed will actually raise the apogee of its orbit from just a few hundred miles above the Earth to more than 20,000 miles above the Earth. So in about a minute, uh, that upper stage engine, engine will do the work necessary to place the payload into the target orbit for spacecraft separation. The spacecraft on tonight's mission, Inmarsat 6F2, is owned by the London-based company Inmarsat, which has produced a nice animation video here. After deploying from the Falcon 9 rocket, the spacecraft will unfurl its solar arrays, it will unfurl antennas, it will also deploy a 30-foot diameter or 9-meter diameter L-band reflector that will connect up with users on the go, providing maritime communications connectivity over the Atlantic Ocean. The solar arrays fully deployed span 47 meters. That's about the that's about the wingspan of a Boeing 767 jetliner. The body of the spacecraft is about the size of a double-decker bus. The spacecraft has two different payloads, one in L-band and then one in a wider band known as KA band for higher speed connectivity. The L-band service is used uh, for safety of life and critical maritime services. Uh, the L-band is more stable and is less, uh, less uh, obstructed by things like rainfall and inclement weather. The KA band, though, offers higher speed connectivity. The spacecraft will be using its electric thrusters to reach its circular geostationary orbit over the course of about seven months. So it's mid-February now, sometime in September. The satellite should be on station in its circular geostationary orbit, begin testing, and then should enter service over the Atlantic Ocean later this year. Now, 20 minutes since the launch this evening, here's a view of the empty pad at Space Launch Complex 40, where the Falcon 9 took off at 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time, or 3.59 a.m. UTC, at the very top of tonight's launch window. About six minutes now to go until the next major milestone in tonight's mission, the upper stage burn to inject the payload into its geostationary transfer orbit.
acquisition Gabon. More than 25 minutes into tonight's mission, the Falcon 9 rocket currently flying over Africa. It's in range of a downrange tracking station in Libreville, Gabon. That tracking station uh, will be monitoring telemetry from the rocket's upper stage for the upcoming burn, which will inject the Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft into its targeted elliptical geostationary transfer orbit tonight. That burn coming up in about 30 seconds. Now seeing some live video from space from the Falcon 9's upper stage. And there is ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine. Engine nozzle glowing red hot just as it did for tonight's first burn. This engine generating more than 200,000 pounds of thrust only needs about a minute of impulse to accelerate the upper stage and the Inmarsat 6F2 payload to the targeted orbital velocity for tonight's mission. Now accelerating faster than 30,000 kilometers per hour. Now about halfway through this burn. And there's engine shutdown. The Falcon 9 reached a maximum speed of 35,443 kilometers per hour. Nominal orbit insertion. And we just heard the call from SpaceX Launch Control, a very crucial call that the team has confirmed. The Falcon 9 has reached its expected orbit tonight. So it's put the MRSAT 6F2 spacecraft exactly where the customer wanted it in this elliptical transfer orbit with an apogee or high point now stretching more than 20,000 miles above the Earth. The satellite will use its onboard propulsion system for the remainder of the maneuvers over the next few months to reach its circular orbit in a geostationary altitude over the equator. Now, the next major milestone will be the deployment, the separation of the Inmarsat 6F2 spacecraft from the Falcon 9 upper stage that's coming in less than four minutes now.
acquisition of signal heart of beach stock. Tracking station in Hartebeestock, South Africa, is now receiving signals from the Falcon 9 rocket and will be tracking the rocket as it deploys the NMRSAT 6F2 spacecraft. That spacecraft separation milestone a little more than 30 seconds away. We hope to get some live video. And there we have some video from the Falcon 9 upper stage as it prepares to deploy the NMRSAT 6F2 spacecraft. Beautiful shot with the blue hue of planet Earth as the rocket flies over Africa. Payload separation confirmed. And there is separation of the NMARSAT 6 F2 mobile communications satellite from the Falcon 9 rocket, flying more than 600 kilometers over Africa. The Falcon 9 has hit its marks tonight to place the spacecraft into its targeted geostationary transfer orbit. The spacecraft is going to use its electric propulsion system over the next few months to reach its circular geostationary orbit over the equator before entering service uh, later this year, providing connectivity to ships and airplanes. Spacecraft uh, will soon deploy or partially deploy its solar panels. That'll be one of the first milestones after deploying from the Falcon 9 rocket. And then NMRSAT 6F2 will begin a series of burns with its plasma propulsion system. Those plasma thrusters are positioned on the end of articulating arms on the NMRSAT 6F2 spacecraft. They're low thrust, highly efficient thrusters uh, that will guide gradually the NMRSAT 6F2 spacecraft to its final position over the Atlantic Ocean where it will orbit in lockstep with Earth's rotation with a fixed coverage zone Effective over the Atlantic, signal, the Americas, and parts of Europe as well. Here's a look now at Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station where the Falcon 9 departed 34 minutes ago to begin tonight's successful launch. The Emersat and Airbus teams will be listening for the first signals from the newly launched spacecraft in the next few minutes. Uh, through a spacecraft tracking station in Perth, Australia. Uh, that'll be a key confirmation of the health of the spacecraft after tonight's launch. And then the spacecraft will run through its uh, post-launch and early operations phase over the next few hours and days. Before we sign off for the evening, we want to go through some mission stats as we normally do. This was the 205th launch of a Falcon 9 rocket since the launch vehicle's debut back in 2010. And in fact, the second Falcon 9 launch of the day, as we mentioned earlier in, in our coverage, there was a Falcon 9 that uh, launched from out in California a little more than nine hours ago. This was the 215th launch overall of SpaceX's Falcon rocket family. This includes Falcon 1s, Falcon 9s, and Falcon Heavies. This was the third launch and landing of this particular booster, Booster 1077, in SpaceX's inventory of reusable rockets. This was the 175th Falcon 9 launch from Florida, the 114th SpaceX launch from Pad 40. That's SpaceX's most used launch pad. This is the 169th launch overall from Pad 40, including Falcon 9 rockets, as well as the Air Force's now retired Titan rockets, uh, which used this complex from the 1960s 
up until uh, the last Titan launch from this pad was in 2005 before the Air Force handed over the lease to SpaceX. This was the 146th flight of a reused Falcon 9 booster. It was the 173rd landing of a Falcon booster, including Falcon 9s and Falcon Heavies. This was the second SpaceX launch for Inmarsat. That's the London-based company that owns the spacecraft that was launched tonight. This was the 12th SpaceX launch of the year, uh, keeping pace with a average cadence of one launch every four days or so since the start of January, and the ninth launch from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station or Kennedy Space Center so far in 2023. Let's look ahead now at some of the launches we'll be covering over the next few days and into the next week. The next SpaceX launch from Florida Space Coast will be scheduled for February the 23rd. That's six days from now. That's next Thursday. That'll be a mission carrying a batch of Starlink Internet satellites from Pad 40 once again at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. This mission, we believe, will be the first launch to carry a new Starlink spacecraft design. That's yet to be confirmed from SpaceX. But the indications that we've uh, read from uh, regulatory filings indicate that this will likely be the launch of a new Starlink spacecraft design, a second generation Starlink spacecraft design. So that'll be an interesting launch to cover next week. On February the 26th, a Falcon 9 rocket will be launching the next four crew members to the International Space Station from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, just a few miles to the north of Pad 40. Here's a live look at Launch Complex 39A right now, where the Crew-6 mission is set to launch in the wee hours of the morning, a pre-dawn launch on February the 26th on a Crew Dragon spacecraft. This mission will be carrying uh, two NASA astronauts, one astronaut from the United Arab Emirates, and a one Russian cosmonaut for a six-month expedition on the ISS. In this view, you can see the strongback structure at Launch Complex 39A has been lowered after some reconfiguration of that strong back for the upcoming Crew Dragon launch on the Falcon 9 rocket, that uh, strong back or transporter erector will be rolled into the hangar uh, shortly, we believe, for integration with its Falcon 9 rocket and the Crew Dragon spacecraft in the coming days before rolling out again to the pad next week for a hold down test firing ahead of the launch on the 26th. And then later this month, a couple more launches that so we don't have firm dates for right now. Uh, but uh, Soyuz rocket is expected to launch later this month or perhaps in early March with a Soyuz spacecraft heading for the International Space Station. This will be an uncrewed Soyuz spacecraft. It's a replacement uh, for the damaged Soyuz spacecraft that's docked at the space station that uh, suffered a coolant leak back in December. Uh, that spacecraft is no longer deemed uh, flight-worthy uh, to bring the crew home from the space station, a crew of uh, two Russian cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut. So the Russian space agency is planning to launch a replacement, which will serve as the lifeboat for those three crew members, and then their eventual ride home later this year. Also later this month, uh, SpaceX is preparing for their next launch from Mountain California with another batch of Starlink satellites set to fly on the Starlink 2-7 mission, uh, likely the very end of February or very early March is when that launch is expected to take off. So one more look at Launch Complex 40 tonight, a successful mission for SpaceX, a Friday doubleheader now complete with the Falcon 9 launch earlier in the day from California with 51 Starlink internet satellites. And now tonight, a successful flight into orbit for Inmarsat from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Stephen Clark, editor of Spaceflight Now. It's been a pleasure. I want to thank Stephen Young for video production and camera operator support tonight. We'll see you next time for the next launch from Florida Space Coast.